All right guys, so I'm gonna be attempting to build a $1,500 PC with no prior experience. I mean, I've watched a couple YouTube tutorials and stuff, but that's it, I'm clueless when it comes to computers. The main reason I wanna do this is because I wanna show that if it works for me and I can do it, that means any of you can do it. So as I go through and build it, I'll go ahead and show what each part that I'm putting in and um, hopefully it turns out well. I mean, the only part I'm a little nervous about is the Ryzen. Um, installing that just because I heard that you can bend the pins pretty easy, but it seems pretty self-explanatory So we'll go ahead and get started um, Pretty much. I just want you guys to know though I have no idea So if you see if you guys know how to build one and you watch me and you're like, oh my god, what it's doing? Yeah, that's the reason I'm sure I can figure it out. It doesn't seem too bad So let's go ahead and try this out for the power supply. I went with this one right here. It's the Antec 650 watt um, using the PC parts picker side, I was able to find that this should be enough for my application. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up, plug it in and use that as a ground to get rid of any static before I go ahead and work on anything else. So judge, just got to make sure to touch that every, every once in a while, just to get rid of any static. Okay, I went ahead and plugged it in to act as my ground, but I want to show you guys something. I'm actually pretty pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. It came with some cable ties and some zip ties for cable management later. I was not expecting that. I don't know if they all come with it. Like I said, not familiar with computers, but that's a cool, th cool little thing they included in the box there. Okay, so for the motherboard, I went with the Prime X570 Pro. I uh, just want to let you guys know this is not a tutorial as this is honestly my first time doing it. I just want to document everything that's going on so you guys can see if I have any trouble with anything or anything like that. Then I'll throw that in. So it's not going to be an exact step by step, but I will be showing once things are in and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out and leave it on top of the box to give me a nice little area to work. Okay, so I have the motherboard on top. I went ahead and pulled this little pin up pretty much just a little tiny bit to the left and pulled straight up. And for this, for the CPU, you see that tiny little triangle at that top corner? You gotta go ahead and line that up with that triangle right there. Once it's lined up, you can just put it on and let it fall right in. So, I mean, that's what I've heard. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it and I'll get back to you guys once it's in. Okay, yeah, pretty much what I heard was true. You just put it right on top. And honestly, with like no pressure, once it's lined up, it'll just go right in on its own. That way you don't worry about bending any of the pins. Now that it's down, I can pretty much just go ahead and bend that right back down. Once it clicks, you know you're good. Okay, so for the RAM, I went with the Trident Z Neo. I went with 32 gigabytes, being six, two 16 gigabyte RAM sticks, because I do want to be able to do a bit of editing and not worry about speed. So 32 should be more than enough for what I want to do. So those for this motherboard are going to go into the, as you can see here, A2 and B2 slots. And those are going to be the light gray ones right here, A2 and B2. And for those two, all you have to do on one of the sides, you, it's going to be the right side for this one. Just go ahead and pop this out. You're going to line up the teeth, one side's longer than the other, and then just push them straight in. I would show it, but I'm kind of a one man crew here, so I can't hold the camera and do I mean, I probably can, but I don't want to risk damaging something. So I'll get right back as soon as that's in. Okay, both RAM sticks are in. Um, very simple. As long as it's straight, it just pushes right in. You pretty much know when it's all the way in because you get a nice satisfying click. Not only do you get a nice click on both ends, but the, the clip itself just go ahead goes ahead and just comes right back into its original position so that's kind of reassuring also before i continue adding any extra parts i noticed that they do have these plastic things that you gotta remove so for this um motherboard right here it's basically gonna be in this three spots i already went ahead and lifted it a little bit so i could go ahead and take it off easily there's one there's two right here And the third one was right over here. Okay, so next is gonna be the M.2 drive. I went with the Crucial P1, it's a terabyte. And this board right here has a total of two slots. One is gonna be right here, and the second is actually gonna be covered by this right here. My idea is I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and place it here so that in the future, if I decide to add another one, 
um, I'm just it'll be easier to access here on this side over here once it's already built not having to try to get this off while every other piece is on okay so I pulled that piece off right here as you can see there the um, so the M.2 drawer is going to go in here and then the screws going to go over there your motherboard should have come with these screws it comes with uh, mine came with four. I have those two right here and the two I'm gonna use are right there so I'm gonna put these aside make sure I don't lose those I have a back from so um, So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and hold it over So you can kind of guess The length not guess but you can see the length So it's gonna be kind of hard to do with one hand, but I'm gonna try to show you best I can So I'm gonna hold it over and you can see Which actual spot you need to put that screw in so you're gonna hold it over and wherever it lines up you put that in so you could put it so you can go ahead and drop in the end two and put the screw in on top okay hopefully from this angle I can show you a little better so I went ahead and put that screw in right here you can see it right there and then after that once I measured the distance by holding it over after that you can go ahead and just place it in the top slot and it's kind of like a springboard so you're gonna lay this down and you're gonna go ahead and put that screw in and that should hold it in place and your M.2 is in. Okay, so for the cooler, I'm not going with the one that came with the CPU. Uh, I'm actually going with the Hyper 212 RGB Black Edition. So you're gonna have to go ahead and put this together. Um, you just honestly just follow the instructions for that one because it's kind of a pain. It's just these little square, um, these little square pins that you're putting through here and then this slides right over it it's kind of a pain um, you push it in a little hard but read the instructions and you should be fine on that one and then you're gonna be removing these right here because we're not gonna be using those and when you remove those there's another bracket under the motherboard that'll pop right out you just go ahead and move that out of the way so that you can go ahead and put your thermal paste on it which came with my cooler so one might come with yours I would double check that go ahead and put it on and just install the fan on top Okay, it is now officially day two. Last night, I went ahead and installed that fan and those fans right there and try to run the cables um, just to an area where I think they're gonna be easiest to get to the motherboard without having too many wires like crazy. Only thing about these fans right here is they all have two wires and they all, um, they kind of all link into each other. So it only uses one of your actual um, RGB ports, but, it makes a huge mess of the cable so hopefully once i get the motherboard in there i can try to clean that up a little bit but yeah um so yeah i can go ahead and try to put the motherboard in oh also back to this putting that fan in was a huge pain i honestly recommend that you guys look up a guide on how to do that because that that was a pain i did have to end up removing one of the ram sticks to get it to the fan to fit once it was mounted but yeah it sucked that's been the worst part so far other than that, um, to get the three fans in this case, I did have to remove one of the hard drive ports. But I mean, I currently don't have a hard drive in it. I, ex I expect to put one more one in there, but I don't think I'm going to use two for now. So, I mean, for now, that's good. It's going to go ahead and install that motherboard now. So motherboard is in. I went ahead and plugged in what I could. It took a little longer than expected because it took a little bit more cable management. But um it's pretty good so far the only thing i'm not too sure about are these right here these front panel power connectors i mean if they're wrong it doesn't start i guess i'll just flip them around but uh, i mean all in all it's not too bad okay next step is going to be putting the power supply in and wiring everything up and then for the most part i think i'm getting pretty close once i put that in i gotta see what else i'm missing but i mean hopefully i'll be done soon Okay, so I pretty much stopped recording because I realized it was kind of turning into more of a step-by-step -step, and I said it wasn't going to be a guide, so I just finished it up. It was pretty much almost done anyway, just wired it up and I'm going to try to start it for the first time. So, I'm going to go ahead and flip the switch. Yes! Alright, lights, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. Now, the moment of truth. The power button. <gasps> okay they, if it posts that means if I can do it anyone can do it because I had no idea what I was doing no god please no 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 
All right, guys, I figured it out. Check it out. Day three. I had to stop last night because it was 2 a.m. and I worked at 5 o'clock again. Slept three hours, but it's on. And let's see if it posts this time. I know it says PlayStation, but I just took the, the wire and plugged it into this TV from the PlayStation just because these monitors are being used by my work computer. But check it out. It posts. Alright, so here's the solution. So I had the issue that there was a light right there in the motherboard called VGA that was flashing and I wouldn't get signal. So if that happens to you, I don't, I don't know. I didn't find this anywhere. So I'm going to let you guys know what I did because I tried unplugging my graphics card and trying to start it and I just started unplugging stuff. What, you ha what I had to do was unplug one of my RAM sticks and start it. With one, it started. I went ahead and installed everything and upgraded, my, updated my drivers. And once I did that, then I could install the second RAM stick and it would work. Just make sure to check your, um, your book, your user guide for your motherboard. And it'll tell you if you're going to use a single stick of RAM, which one you had to use for this motherboard. I had to just stay, stick with this first slot of RAM and it worked. So that po it finally posted. It started, I updated it, and now it starts with no problem. So, I just wanted to show you guys, if I could do it, that means everyone can. And I mean, check it out, for my first build, that came out real great, right? It's nice, it's a little dirty, just cause I've been moving it around right now, trying to adjust it in my room. I mean, I'm not gonna have a plug in my TV always, but for now, since I don't seem to, be, to have anything, for now, since it's all I got, I check it out. Oh yeah, I'm not connected to the internet right now, but it's all working, all good. I'm gonna finally start to install stuff, but first build. All right, actually, I know I just said it was dirty, but you know what I forgot? I forgot the last peel. Ooh. There you go, now she ain't dirty. All right, now I guess all that's left is getting some nice cinematic shots. I mean, if I can, we'll see if I can figure that out. But if I can, that means cue the music now. So that's pretty much it for me. I guess I just want to leave you guys with a summary of my experience. Honestly, at times it was a little stressful, but it was actually pretty fun. So if I, I think if you want to try to do it, just do it. It's honestly pretty easy if you just watch a YouTube video, follow the steps. All I did was search up X570 Pro Guide, and they had a step-by-step -step on how to build this specific motherboard. So I'm pretty sure if you look up for look up any motherboard, you could either find yours or a similar one. And I had zero experience. Like I haven't had a PC in like six years. So it was super easy. And I mean, just give it a try, honestly. Um, so that's gonna be pretty much it. I mean, if you guys want to uh, another, a follow up video on how it's running, let me know and I'll see if I can get that done. Other than that, that's it. Peace.